Before we get started, I want to thank our sponsor, DroneQuote. If you remember, DroneQuote has been a sponsor on this channel before. They provide a service that allows for roofing and solar panels to be installed. Today, I want to walk you through their EV calculator. So this is to help you calculate the cost of an EV, as well as how many solar panels you would need to offset that cost. So for example here, I'm just going to choose a Tesla Model S, I'm going to say 10,000 miles a year. Current gas price is around $3.50, unless you live in California. Electricity, where I live, the electricity cost is 11 cents per kilowatt hour. For solar, it's actually 0 0.06 or six cents per kilowatt hour. This estimate shows that I need about five solar panels. This is all it takes to be able to drive on sunshine. So if you're in the market for a new roof or solar panels, please visit DroneQuote. We may have a few new viewers. I'm just gonna catch you up real quick on where we're to with this build. So this is build number two. This is my first time doing an auction. So I won an auction, a Porsche Cayman. This is a 2014. My goal with this is really just to use the chassis and a lot of the convenience features. But I'm gonna also do some of the things I really enjoyed, which was create some of my own custom panels. So this car is gonna have its own unique design. This is also gonna be a dual motor or all wheel drive car. So what we've done so far is really just strip everything down. And now we're starting the building process. And to start with, we're gonna take a 3D scan. First, let's talk about how 3D scanning works. You may have seen images or videos like this where it's almost an optical illusion and you really can't tell until you kind of look a little bit to the side. That's kind of how 3D scanning works. The 3D scanner emits light or energy and then it has little side cameras that pick up the reflected light or energy that's how it can tell the 3D shape of the object. This is the Revo Point Range 3D Scanner. So they offer different uh, types. This one is actually for larger scale things like a car. All right, I hooked it up to a laptop. Oh, it just turned green. So it stayed red for a while. Now it's green, so that means it's hooked up. So after it's connected, this one came up and said connected. So now we're gonna start a new project. I think what I'm gonna start with is scanning my motor. So I'm gonna unpack my dual motor set, probably start off with the small one. From the little bit that I've researched, light objects, not super reflective, um, things with edge geometry, not flat surfaces, I think those will all be good candidates. So I think this one will be a good one to start on. All right, we got the uh, small motor, the front motor out. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna break out the 3D scanner and to have this be our first scan. This is telling me if, the, if things are too near or too far. This is telling me uh, exposure, if it's uh, overexposed or underexposed. So we're gonna go ahead and start. One of the other things I think is cool about the scanner is um, not only does it give you that depth, the 3D, it also captures color. So when you get the 3D scan, it actually kind of has color and looks like what you're scanning. So the problem I have is I'll get a good spot and I'll keep trying to move and it'll lose position. So I may need to break out uh, some of the 3D scanning spray or also uh, I've got some dots that will help. So I've tried a couple times with partial success. I think I've got a couple scans that I could stitch together for a pretty good model. I'm gonna try the 3D scanning spray, or the cheap alternative, dry shampoo. After a lot of trial and error, um, I was able to join some models and kind of this is what we've got here. It also happens that there was a 3D scan of this motor online. We can compare what I did with what's online. So I think with a little better understanding now, um, I can make the process go a little bit faster. I think this is the future of car building. I think uh, soon gone will be the days of just kind of guessing and putting cardboard on cars. I think it'll be more scanning and modeling. The challenge is now I'm gonna do the actual car 
which has a lot of dark surfaces and it's gonna be hard to get light. All right, so this is what we're trying to scan, really the place where we believe the front motor will go. So I'll do the best I can, try and show you some shots along the way. All right, I really don't have enough hands for this, but I am in the uh, front area here where I want the front motor to go. Got my laptop here with the software. That is the 3D scanner handpiece. All right, so over here, I click new scan. These scans are all part of a larger project that I can stitch together later. So over there, it gives you kind of a live image. And those bars on the right, they're kind of orange and flashing green. Green is good, it also tells you if you're too far, too close, um, if there's insufficient points. But basically, as I start moving this around, oh, so there's my hand, there's that, you can see it's starting to capture the data. Although I thought I was having some pretty good success, I later learned that optimizing the scan settings can give you even better results. Just look at my face. So I got a few scans from under the car. I'm gonna lower it and get a few more from on top. We'll stitch them all together. We'll see if we can find a place for this motor to live. Here are the scans. I realize uh, for those who are not uh, 3D inclined, this, this one might be a little challenging to see, but these are the surfaces of the inside, I'll call it front engine bay. We're gonna see where this motor can live. So the motor position as Tesla has it isn't gonna work super well for the space that exists right now. I'll either need to cut some of the panels to allow access or, so I think if I tilt it about 45 degrees, I believe the, uh, Look like the gear oil transmission fluid pickup is still in an okay spot. I think this will be okay. If you guys know better, please leave your comments below. As long as we're scanning, I'm gonna scan the rear motor bay as well. This, this will be the spot for both the rear motor as well as the battery pack. So I've got a few scans here. I think what I'm gonna do is kind of tell you some of my thoughts, some of the things I've learned from scanning while you're watching the scans. So besides just getting the 3D image, the scanner is moved around from place to place to capture larger objects. The 3D scanner has built-in programming that can actually keep track of features as you're scanning. This does best when the features are not reflective and not big flat surfaces. The challenge it has with big flat surfaces is it's very hard to keep track of one flat surface versus another. So for bigger areas, I struggled with the feature tracking and how to go to the reflective markers. Put all the dots on the car. This really improves tracking. It struggles quite a bit with like flat reflective surfaces. So this actually did very, very well. There was also, uh, I'll say a difference between light and dark. Um, it had kind of a contrast setting so if something was a light object, um, you wanted to pick one contrast setting and it would pick up all the light things pretty well, but the dark things would struggle. But if you went back and rescanned it with the contrast setting um, at a different setting up higher, they could scan the dark things as well. Then came stitching the various scans together. Sometimes this did fantastic. and other times it was epic failures. Made me laugh. And the last thing, I wanted to scan some of the parts from the Porsche that I am going to ship off and sell. That way I can have them for reference if I ever need them. So you may be wondering why I'm doing 3D scanning. Um, I find that uh, some of my best work has come when it's planned out, designed, and then executed. I do pretty good on the fly, but uh, I want to do things a little better this time. So I really do think this is the way of the future. I think car building is going to go a lot more to 3D scanning. Um, I wanted to get in on this and uh, try it out. I realize the price of various 3D scanners can range anywhere from a few hundred dollars to several thousand dollars. I felt like this was a good scanner that had good quality and could also be friendly to the budget. That was a lot of scanning. 
And now we're gonna get those things into CAD and do some designing. So we're gonna figure out where to put these motors, how to mount them, got a lot more to come. Thanks for watching, see you next time.